Well, thanks very much for coming along to this case study with uh, Magda Virak from Edith Cowan University. She's a senior lecturer in chemistry, and I've had the pleasure of working with her for a couple of years. I was first introduced to her when she was using OneNote really well with her students, and she's now moved on to Teams and embracing lots of great technology, and she works in a fantastic super lab, which she will tell you all about. So would you like to introduce yourself and um, tell us how you use Teams and other Microsoft tools for hybrid learning? Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Or well, depending what time this will be running, maybe it's afternoon. Um, thank you. I just want to say thank you very much to Microsoft for inviting me to be part of this uh, Microsoft EDU day. Uh, I am on holidays, but I'm stuck. I'm in lockdown, so you've got my attention. <laughs> I've got can't go anywhere else today. Um, yes, I have been working with Steve for, oh wow, two, maybe two, three years, maybe longer, about three years at least. Uh, and we first met um, because I was interested in using uh, OneNote in my teaching. Uh, and I have since moved on and obviously embraced Teams. Um, so I'm using both of those technologies uh, in my teaching. I implemented OneNote in my laboratory uh, lab classes because I wanted to move on from using paper-based lab, uh, lab books to a digital environment. Um, and that's for a number of reasons. This is where the uh, future is. Uh, research laboratories are now using digital um, lab books. Uh, for recording all of the data. It's a safer way. It gives you obviously um, ability to share information and it's safer as well. So I want the students to have that experience at university so that when they go out into the workforce, they know uh, how to use digital lab books. I chose to use OneNote predominantly because it's uh, free, but also it has a lot of the features that I'm interested in. Now, Let's go back to 2020. I know that was a year we all want to forget, but uh, it was a year where I actually embraced technology in all its capability. And the building that you can see behind me, the picture, is actually a new science building that was completed in January 2020. And we moved into that building, or my, my class has moved into that building. We have um, a super lab environment, which means I have 96 students in a lab class. And because I was already implementing OneNote uh, the, year, the two years prior to moving to the new building, my uh, Dean of uh, Teaching and Learning um, allowed me to implement OneNote, uh, sorry, digital lab books into the new um, super labs, and we purchased nine, sorry, uh, two, nearly 200, because we have two super labs, 200 um, Surface Go's so that we can use digital lab books. So the first three weeks of the semester, we were in the super lab. And uh, with the help of Steve and other Microsoft team members, they came into the Super Lab and they helped me to launch over 300 OneNote notebooks uh, for my students. That was a monumental task. It actually worked uh, extremely well, and Stephen was actually surprised. <laughs> um, and the students. Um, were ready to go for the for the semester, and of course, then in about tw on the twentieth of March, we went into lockdown, and I had to move my laboratory and my uh, lecture classes fully online. So, how did I do that? Well, I tell you what, if it wasn't for OneNote and also for um, Teams, I really don't know how I would have done this. Um, otherwise. So let me show you how I transitioned. Um, I'm going to talk predominantly about my laboratory work because, well, lectures, of course, um, were done by Teams using uh, Teams meetings, so that wasn't um, sort of that exciting, I guess. 
Uh, but it's the laboratory work, uh, sorry, laboratory uh, classes that I want to show you how I transitioned. So I'm going to share my screen because I want to explain um, how the how I set up the Teams environment. OK, so let me just show you an uh, example of how I had the lab class set up and I'm going to just take you into OneNote uh, at the moment because I have all my information here. And as you can see, this is uh, actually I've got some pictures of the building. I was showing the students uh, the process when the building was being built. And one thing I wanted to show you, which is quite um, funny, I suppose, or interesting, is the in, um, internet cables. And this is all because of me, I was told, because I introduced digital notebooks into the lab classes and because we had over 200 of those um, Surface Go's, we needed a lot of cable. Now here you can actually see what the lab um, environment looks like. So we have students on benches. Uh, we've got 96 students in one uh, lab. This is what the corridor looks like. This is the building. This is me. No, I wasn't involved in the building process, but it looks like I was. And this here is just to show you how we've got the Surface Go's um, set up in the actual lab classes. Now, what I'd like to show you, because it'll help with the story, is I'm just going to open up. Oops. No, no we're going to do that later. Sorry about that. OK, so let me just show you what the lab classes look like. So this is a PowerPoint embedded. And as you can see, while I'm doing this, I'm actually showing you some of the features of OneNote, but I've just embedded a PowerPoint presentation that I gave to the students in the first lab class. And that's what I wanted to show you. So this is how I had the Super Lab teaching plan set out. And I had the display screens uh, in the front and I've got benches A, B, C, D, E, F. I have 16 students sitting uh, at each bench and I had a teaching assistant looking after those 16 students while I was presenting uh, my pre-lab uh, pre presentation to the whole 96 students. So this was in the actual lab itself. Now what I wanted to do when we went to online learning is I wanted to preserve that. And so the way I preserve this, and I'm going to close this now and go back to Teams, that's how I preserved it. So I created Teams uh, for each bench. So as you can see here, we've got, um, so these are my different, sorry, just to explain, this is two different units. This is general chemistry, SCC 1111, and this is my large class with over 300 students. So SCC 1123, I had bench A, B, C, D, E, and F. One of my demonstrators decided to put a different, <laughs> different logo. She wanted to be different. OK, so the idea was we had um, those benches and each demonstrator was allocated a bench and this was um, exactly the way it was in the actual lab class itself. So let me just go into one of those uh, teams and show you further how I um, designed um, the channels. So I had the general channel as um, you always have for general questions and then because each I had three lab sessions. Uh, there was a 9.30 to 12.30, 1.30 to 4.30 and 5.30 to 8.30. So the students literally came in at the time they would have normally come into the physical lab. And the way I used the teams was that the demonstrator, the particular demonstrator would go into that channel at that time. So here we've got Daniel um, and the communication between the demonstrator and the students on that bench was done by Teams. And you can see uh, there's a little bit of 
uh, questions about the actual lab class, the actual lab, you know, how do I do this? Can you help me with this question and so on? Now this, I like this because it was very transparent and also gave students a, a structure and they knew exactly, you know, who's looking after them, who do they talk to. Now I implemented Teams with OneNote, so let me show you how that worked. My, um, there's so much I want to tell you, I'm trying to figure out what to tell you, but uh, look, I guess the way I've organised OneNote, everyone organises it differently. Uh, for those of you who are OneNote pros, um, this will be very familiar, but for those of you who haven't used OneNote, you'll be wondering what all these things are, but they're just tabs you can create. So um, you, you, you create um, information, you can put your information into different areas. So this tab is for all the information about OneNote. Uh, I've got my answers and marking guides. Now if I go and then I've got uh, attendance, um, risk information and then I kept withdrawn students. But if you go back to this, the main uh, area, you've got the tab about welcoming students and then on the right hand side I've got individual pages. I have the COVID information, lab information, introducing all my demonstrators, their pictures and a little bit about them. Uh, introduction to Super Lab, which you've seen before, I've got pictures. And then I had information about uh, electronic lab books and uh, OneNote. Just just by a little quick uh, side side information, I uh, just wanted to show you. I put this picture up to explain to students how the laboratory laboratory notebook uh, has not changed for since the 1900s, and this is Marie Curie using, and this is her actual lab book, uh, and that's how we've been doing labs. Um, oh, that's how we've been actually um, recording all our lab uh, lab uh, experiments for you know up to up to uh, more recently, and that's why I wanted to move to a digital um, environment and use electronic lab books, which offer quite a lot richer ability. Um, sorry, a, a richer um, area. Using, sorry, I'm losing my words. Um, you can uh, get students to to draw, um, you know, the actual experimental setup, but they can also record videos, uh, take pictures, etc. So it's just a lot, um, a lot more information can now be stored in a lab book. Okay, so that's. Um, one of the tabs. I've also got a tab about how to use OneNote for students and then we've got sections such as collaboration space. This is where you share data with students and actually one. Uh, then we've got content library. This is where I had the actual experiments, um, feedback about each experiment, the actual lab manual and lab reports. That's the template and then safety notes for each experiment. So of course everybody um, designs this differently. Then we've got teacher only area, which I showed you before, and this is not seen by students. And of course here I've got all my students, 16 students enrolled. So the way uh, I implemented OneNote with Microsoft uh, Teams is students, um, for example, I'll show you one example here. Students were given videos. The videos were actually embedded in uh, OneNote. They used the, they watched the video of the experiment and then they had to write up uh, what was happening in the video. And while they were doing that, this is just so fantastic. While they were writing up, the demonstrator was, the dem each demonstrator was actually checking because they were going into each one note and looking at what students were doing and they were able to give feedback on time feedback so this is very powerful um, normally in the lab class the student writes up the lab and then they submit it later for marking but while they're doing the lab 
and recording data, doing um, writing equations. They're not really giving uh, feedback straight away. Well, this was possible um, to do, and I think that's you know that's fantastic. Um, and so students, you know, could see if they're making a mistake straight away, and they were able to correct it. Uh, so while if they had any questions for the uh, for the demonstrator, they'll go into Teams and that's where they would be asking the question in this area here. So it was quite well structured and I wanted it this way so that the students felt, um, you know, a sense of uh, structure and also they felt that we were still doing laborat uh, laboratory classes and the only difference is they weren't physically in the lab. Now, videos, let me tell you about videos. Videos, I wanna show you an example. I'll go to another, um, just another of my other units. And videos were done <laughs> on the go. Sorry, I'm just looking around where my content library. Okay, so um, lab manual, here we go. Okay, so let me just show you how I um, embedded the videos into our students' um, lab, if you like, the, the actual uh, experiment uh, lab manual. And this is an example of one of those um, experiments that students were doing. So you can see that I've, I've given them a template. This is where they record the data, but they also have um, instructions how to carry out the experiment. So I'm just going to pick on this one here, household bleach. So doing experiments with household bleach. And this is just one way of embedding a video just by creating um, a direct link. Uh, by the way, ECU uses Panopto as their video recording um, technology, so I'm going to click on that. Now, it's going to be a little bit noisy. Uh, this is my lovely um, laboratory um, t assistant. Um, she's my lab tech at ECU, Nadia, and because she was able to be on campus, um, she was able to record the videos for me. So, thank big thank you to Nadia. So, I'm going to play this short video, a little bit of it. So you can see what the students were seeing. Uh, it is a little bit noisy because Nadia had to do this in film hood. Okay, here we go. This is very old bleach that will have hardly any left. Um, so the students would uh, watch the video, uh, obviously see some color changes as you could see in the video, and then they would record uh, their observations in one note, chemical equation, and then for example here they had to identify what type of reaction this is. So um, as you can see, I really tried to make this um, simulate the on-campus laboratory environment as much as possible. Uh, the only, well, the only, the most important part that was missing is students physically doing the experiment. But in terms of, um, you know, visualizing the experiments, seeing the observations, recording the observations, getting all the feedback, it was exactly the same. And again, I want to say this, uh, it, this would just not be possible without having OneNote and uh, Teams environment. So I have no idea how other <laughs> Uh, other lecturers managed to do this. Uh, from what I know, I think they had students obviously writing uh, on pieces of paper, taking photos, emailing, or perhaps um, they had students um, just typing in in Word and then emailing um, the lecturer the uh, the lab reports. Um, 
I can imagine doing that. That would have just been so much work. And as I said, the, the beauty of this was that um, the demonstrators were able to uh, mark online and give student uh, feedback. All right. Uh, what else do I want to show you that I used OneNote for? I think I'd like to quickly um, show you how I used it for uh, final assessment. So I'll stay here and go to teacher only area. So uh, because we were obviously uh, fully online in semester one 2020, there was no assessment done on campus and this was a big headache for everybody. How do you assess students online and maintain um, some sense of um, moderation and you know making sure that students um, are not cheating. <laughs> now I I decided to go with OneNote. I spoke to my uh, Dean of Teaching and Learning. He was a bit reluctant. He didn't know much about OneNote, but I explained how it works. And the one thing he was really excited about was the idea that I'd be able to monitor as students are actually completing um, the, the assessment. So here's an example of uh, final assessment for my um, advanced chemistry unit. This is of course with answers, so these are my answers, but the students would get the template, um, just the boxes without the, the red answers, and they would be completing these whilst I was watching. So let me just show you one example of Oops, I've got to go back to, oh, I can't show you that because it's not here, uh, the assessment. But the idea was that students were, sorry, I, I've hidden all my students' um, reports. But the students were completing the questions and while they were doing the questions, I was watching them. So I could see that they were writing in and um, if there was any issue with uh, plagiarism, I could see if they were copying and pasting because that would, um, you know, I would suddenly see uh, a lot of information at once. So that was my way of monitoring. Um, what else did I use this for? Ah, OK, so this is laboratory work, but I've also used Teams for lectures. So let me go back to Teams for a second and go to a calendar. And let's go back, 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 back in time. So I'd like to show you what I did. I created in calendar, I created links. So let's go to March. Oh my goodness, that takes me back. Here we go. Let's pick the day, busy day for me. Uh, back in May, the 5th of May. So what I created uh, were links to uh, online lecture and then I had a link to uh, experiment session. Now how that worked was I then put that link. Now sorry this is going to take a little bit of time. Just bear with me. I need to open up web browser and go to Blackboard which is our LMS that we use, you can be able to see everything we've got here. Now this is something that um, Steve helped me with, so thank you Steve. Oh, here we go, this is embarrassing. This is not me, this is ECU. All right, let's start again. So Steve was very helpful in showing me how to take the link from Teams and embed it into my LMS system so that students were able to go to Blackboard and if there was a lecture coming, if they were supposed to be on campus, they clicked on that link. So let me take you to Blackboard. They'll click on that link and it will take them directly into um, So I've just copied this from last year. So here we go. Example module four, they, that's what I was talking about. So we had um, a link here um, 
Now, of course, I've now converted that to actual live lecture recording, uh, but it was just a link and it would take them to the meeting, Teams meeting, but now you can see that as a lecture. There you go. Okay. I'll just fast forward. So here we go. Okay, I'll use my. Okay, guys. So now I um, I know other lecturers went for pre-recorded lectures. I didn't want that. I really wanted the interactivity. So what I actually had, um, I want to show you a picture, which is quite a funny. I think it's a funny picture. Maybe not. Just wanted to show you how I was actually working. So this is me. <laughs> Most of semester one 2020 was spent like this. Uh, so just to explain what I was doing, I would have um, Surface Pro, I would have my computer and I would have a mobile phone. So this is something that Steve actually um, gave me a tip about this because while I was delivering a lecture, I wasn't able to see students questions. So I had two screens so that if students were asking me a question I could either see it on one screen or I could see it on my phone as well. So I had Teams running on my phone. Uh, I also used the um, Surface uh, Pro if I needed to draw something for the students when I was giving a lecture and that's how I was able to maintain that interactivity. So thank you Steve for all the tips. <laughs> and Finally, I want to show you one more thing that I'm really excited. I was very excited about and I used finally because I've been struggling with this particular feature in OneNote. I finally used collaboration space in its true sense of collaboration. So in semester two 2020, I had a unit where students had group work. Let me just put this in. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so. I created, hopefully this will work. So I created um, group, so we had seven poster group sessions. The students had to create a poster. They worked in a group of two or three people and I want them to use uh, one note for that. So what happened is, I created a space for them to collaborate in. So as you can see here, students were gathering all the information for the particular poster. Um, they were talking to each other through the post, through this um, area as well. And they, you can see the beginnings of the poster being created. So all the students in that group were able to um, share the data and put the information. And even here, if you scroll down, students made some notes and they took a photo and posted it so the other students in the group could see that. So the way to do that now, I also didn't want students from other groups to be looking at other posters because the reveal happened at the end of semester. So I basically uh, put a password uh, on the particular poster group uh, area and then only students in that group were able to uh, get into the area. And then um, at the end of the semester, students um, did presentations and the presentations were done by OneNote because they had the poster and this is an example of a poster. Uh, very interactive, they could have videos uh, embedded, um, so that made the poster um, less, uh, more interesting compared to the previous years where the students actually printed it out. Now, um, I think that's all I wanted to show you, but I think you had a question for me, Steve. Thanks, Magda. That was brilliant. You've uh, obviously built a really great um, collaborative learning space using those tools for hybrid learning. Um, I'd just like to know a couple of things, really. One, um, did you try things out as you went along or did you have a, a plan from the outset? And how did you do the technical stuff? Did you get support locally or online resources or how, how did you manage all that? <laughs> that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, 
it was it was it was mayhem I have to say you know learning learning on the go um, I reached out to people like yourself of course uh, you were a great help because there were things I wanted to do and very quickly for example like embedding uh, the videos embedding the links from teams into blackboard um, and as you know most people well I'm I don't know about most people, but I'm, I'm like this. I don't like reading lots of instructions. <laughs> it was a lot easier just to call you or email you and ask how to do it. But look, um, definitely ECU um, stepped in and the teaching and learning um, people were bombarding us with links and information. But as I said, we just didn't have the time. A lot of, a lot of the time I just had to try, trial things on my own and you know, see how it worked. So some things worked brilliantly, some things didn't. Uh, but hey, it's the best way, right? You throw yourself, you throw yourself in, and um, you know, and you just and you just learn. Uh, but I, a lot of trial and error. Um, the problem was we didn't have time. Time. I wish, I wish I had a month to learn all this. Um, you know how to do this. But I, I have to say I was lucky. I was a little bit ahead of the game because I started using OneNote uh, two years ago and I started using Teams as well. So I was one of those lucky ones. I think I saw the future somehow. <laughs> Not the pandemic, but I certainly uh, knew that, you know, online learning um, was the way to go. and. No, that's that's really that's a really good uh, answer. Thank you. And uh, and you look like someone who doesn't want to just sit still and uh, do it again. Uh, so I wonder, do you have new things planned for this year or things you'd like to try out? Oh, definitely. Uh, I'm really embracing this technology and I'm looking to, you know, what else? What else is new out there? So there are two things I want to tell you about that I'm excited about doing um, this this year, this semester. One thing is, one thing I really struggled with in semester two last year was teaching on campus and having students online at the same time. So, for example, in laboratory conditions or a laboratory environment, I had my teams, uh, I had, I was teaching on campus, but I also had teams uh, environment switched on and I was talking to my online students because if a student was unwell and they couldn't come on campus, I still want them to participate in the lab, like live lab. So I had this idea in my, you know, I envisage having um, the video on and as I'm doing the pre-lab presentation and I'm showing them, you know, this is how you connect equipment, um, they'd be watching at home and they could ask me questions. In theory, that really was that. In theory, it should have worked, but I found it difficult to actually. I had to move the screen around because if I was doing a demonstration, it was in a, on a bench. It didn't actually work that well. The other thing was I wanted this, the students online to be watching the lab live so they can watch what's happening. Uh, but again, I that didn't work very well. Not with my uh, we trialed things like using um, GoPro. We tried to use our mobile phones. None of that worked so well. So this semester I'm going to trial using Surface Hub. I'm going to have a Surface Hub installed in the lab and I want to try and do what um, my hero uh, Professor Callanan is using um, and somehow use the Surface Hub so that I can have the video from the Surface Hub on the lab, on the actual lab class. So wish me luck with that. Good luck. Um, the other thing I'm excited about, and this might be even better, is to use HoloLens. And I have been given a demonstration. So the HoloLens, you put it on your head. <laughs> And whatever you're seeing, the students will be seeing on the video. Um, so that would be maybe a little bit weird, but the idea is I like the idea because then whatever I'm seeing, the students 
uh, that are online will be seeing at the same time. You just got to try, right? See what happens. That's it. Always, always looking forward. Uh, thank you so much for your time today and sharing your story with us, Magda. And I um, hope you have a, a great 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Bye.